So, what we have to do is learn how to take this ego of ours, this part of us that believes that who we are is what we have, and what we do, and what other people think of us. But remember, if you grow up believing that you are what you do, then when you don't, you aren't. <laughs> and if you believe that you are what you have, when it's gone, you aren't. And if you believe that you are what other people think of you, your reputation, which we raise people to believe, it's my, I have to be concerned with what other people think of me. Take this ego and retrain it. And one of the ways that you do to retrain it is, first, you take this idea that the ego has of fear. What are you afraid of? Anybody out there, what are you afraid of? Shift from fear to curiosity. Become curious about what you're afraid of. That's what Lao Tzu taught me. Become curious about what you're afraid of. You're afraid of flying? Get curious about that. Get interested in that. You're, you're afraid of snakes. You're afraid of disapproval. You're afraid. Just shift from fear and say, I'm going to become more curious about what I'm afraid of. And then take all of the things that you're attached to, like all of your photographs, like all of your furniture, like all of your clothing, like all of the stuff that you find so much attachment to, and start letting it go. Mm -hmm. Start letting it go. You know, the day that I turned that key on uh, May the 11th in 2006, I didn't even know where I was going. I just knew there was a shift taking place. I felt freer than I'd ever felt, I think, in my life. In, in my mid-60s out there on a whole new adventure. And here we are talking about it on, the, on national television, on PBS. Take that idea that you have to be attached to things and know that you came in with nothing, with no thing. And you're going to leave with nothing, with no thing. And understand that your life is a parenthesis in eternity. Live there without attachments. And then take your need to be in control of yourself, of others, of the situation, and shift from control to trust. Begin to have a trust. Lao Tzu is profound about this. In each one of the 81 verses, it comes up about 60 times as you look at letting go and letting God, allowing yourself to trust in your nature, allowing yourself to no longer believe that everything has to be controlled by me and that other people no longer have to be in control of me as well. Begin to trust, in tr just like you did for the first nine months. You trusted. Your nose showed up. Your height showed up. Your eyes showed up. Whatever. It all showed up. It's all perfect. It's all the... So why not wander through your life and have this wonderful, peaceful knowing that it's all fine? And finally, shift from your sense of entitlement. What? Nobody, nobody can treat me that way. I'm entitled to have this. Well, I paid for that. I let go. I mean, that in one year, I let go of all of my entitlements. I, have, I don't feel I'm entitled to anything. I'm just here. Shift from entitlements to radical humility. Lao Tzu speaks about it so often. Stay humble. Stay low. The greatest leaders are the ones who do the least. The ones who stay back and, and just model and allow. And at the end of the day, in one of the verses of the Tao, it says, the people will say, we did it ourselves. We did it ourselves. In verse 49 of the Tao Te Ching, here's an exact quote. The sage is kind to the kind and kind to the unkind because the nature of his being is kindness and also be wise and help all beings impartially abandoning none you know what I do just before I did this program I have to admit I was nervous I was humbled by it like, who are you Wayne Dyer, who are you to read the Tao and believe that you can interpret it on television and interpret it in a book and spend a year and say, like, I got real humble with that. And you know what I say? Tao, which is just another word for God or source or Krishna or Allah or whatever you want to call it, guide me. Guide me now. I have that awareness before I come out. If you, if you knew, it says in the Course in Miracles, if you knew who walked beside you 
at all times on this path that you have chosen, you could never experience fear or doubt again. Okay, let's go on to the next thought, to change. So you're changing from not trusting in your nature to trusting in your nature. You change your thought from I need more to what I call living contentment. What is this thing about more? It's the, it's the mantra of the ego, isn't it? I have to have more. I have to collect more stuff. I have to have more friends. I have to have more money. It's more, 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 more. When where you came from, came from nowhere. You don't need anything. It's a continuous bombardment that we are all exposed to in this whole world of believing that we have to have more. It's one of the reasons why I love public television so much. You don't see ads on PBS. You don't have to be constantly exposed to the idea that you have to have more and you have to get more and if you don't have this then you're not complete and so on. So we get bombarded with this idea of attracting more and Lao Tzu says live contentment. Live in a state of being contented. Here's verse 81, the last verse of the Tao Te Ching. My favorite translation of it, and I put it right into the book. Sages do not accumulate anything, but give everything to others. Having more, the more they give. 